Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur number 205, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. So as ever, let's crack on. Uh, the first one is the circle guitar and as you see it's a guitar with a circle and I should probably at this point just be quiet and let you listen to it. <laughs> So as the name implies, it's a guitar with a circle, and in that circle are 16 areas where you can put these little kind of strumming pucks, I guess, or picks. Uh, and what the, each one of them is, it's a bit of strumming wire by the looks of it, but you can have a soft one, you can have a harder one, and it and therefore changes how it actually strums as it brushes past the strings. So you can control that with the buttons on the bottom or you, uh, speed and whatnot, but also you can then control it through a MIDI instrument if you've got one of those as well. And as the reviews say, it forces you to think in a different way. You know, what was previously impossible is now possible. So what do you do with that? So uh, really interesting. Um, don't know how much these cost, by the way. So go and have a look for that. If you do Google it, by the way, do Google circle guitar because circular instrument hilariously just comes up with a tambourine, which is very interesting. There you go. Um, circle guitar. Go and have a check it out if you play guitars. Uh, AI Deltware is a cool thing that's uh, just took my fancy this week. Um, so this is by Not Quite Past, and it's a website that where you can basically go up and you can design Delft tiles. My daughter introduced me to this and it's just the best thing ever. So Delft tiles, if you're not interested or <laughs> you didn't even know, about 1500s in the UK. I think London, Bristol were the main centers of Delftware. Um, however, it looked like this, blue tiles with weird stuff on them. So uh, Jack and Adam uh, over at Not Quite Past have created uh, 20 AI models that will get you come to a good place with your Deltware tiles. They've been pre-trained essentially. Um, and you can go and design your own. You can tell it what you want and it will then create them. They're about 12 pounds a tile, so, you know, between sort of 10 and 15, depending on which one you get. Um, so in no way affiliated to this, but that sounds like a really good present for somebody, just one of these tiles. Go onto the website. Um, it's free, They'll, but they do require you to sign up because it is costing them a little bit of money to actually run the these things for free up until that point uh, you design your tile and then you send it and then they create it as a glaze fire the tile and you get an actual tile that looks like one of these which I think is awesome so there you go um, also think this is really interesting bringing back an art style so this is taking nobody's jobs this is adding jobs I can guarantee you having seen this somebody's probably going to buy one of these things you wouldn't have done that last week so AI and creativity are melding together to actually create jobs rather than lose them which is <laughs> which is a useful thing um, Doom. Uh, how many people can get Doom to run on a million different things? This seems to be the quest of the world right now. So uh, Doom on a HDMI to Lightning dongle. If you don't know what one is, uh, it's kind of, you've probably seen one of these, you probably plugged it into your laptop to try and get it onto a projector or something. But it's one of those, if you have a HDMI and Lightning on a Mac, it took quite a lot of processing power because there was a lot of video that needed to be converted. It wasn't just a straight porting of wires. So in that little dongle, which is why they were so expensive, was a, I think a Samsung designed 400 megahertz um, arm chip and also it had 256 megabytes of RAM just in the dongle so that's way more than any PC back in the day when I was running Doom when it first came out so hence why it can run so beautifully on a dongle shouldn't be a surprise but actually porting it onto the dongle and injecting code is obviously the cool thing here also a warning that you know this is a sort of thing that you can get on what looks like a benign connector so if you get given one of these things do not plug it into your corporate network if you don't know where it's come from because it might be in squirting in some sort of nefarious code likewise if you find a usb uh, on a bus please do not put it into your computer there we go tsa done uh, ChatGPT, you've probably been hearing lots of ChatGPT stuff this week. There's a new model and it's all really interesting. And what's really happening is a lot of the models are now moving to what we call agentic or reasoning models. So uh, that's what's happened with ChatGPT. Obviously, hot on the heels of DeepSeek, made a lot of noise in this area a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it's, you know, obviously they've been working on this for a while, but they've now released it. Uh, it is free. Uh, even if you're um, basically just signed up to ChatGPT, you get the free model, you don't have to pay for it, you can change it. I tried it, um, not really that impressed by it, to be honest. It's a bit clumsy. It seems to get worse <laughs> with the more steps you put in there. But the point is, is what it does is, as you can see in these two screenshots here, if you ask it something normally, it, what it will do is it will do is predictive text adding thing, large language model thing. It'll then give you a sentence that sounds plausible based on its training. If you do it now with an, an agentic wrapper, an agent wrapper around it, it'll then go, well, I'll produce a lot of those things. I'll then... Uh, then figure out what some of those might mean and might be, lead me to then ask another question of myself and I might go away and think about that to try and get you to a better answer. So essentially it's like an agent who goes away and tries to be an expert and asks a lot of questions 
of itself to give you a better act, um, uh, answer. I tried it with code, it was terrible. Um, and I tried it with basically just writing some you know normal prompts and it was it was okay. So um, it's cool and everything, but it's not a massively awesome step forwards we were expecting with um, ChatGPT agents or AI agents. But there you go. If you're interested in what all this is about, it's essentially putting an agent wrapper around what's already existing as a large language model. There you go. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully it was useful. Good, well done. Uh, ByteDance have unveiled the OmniHuman project. So this isn't available just yet, but they're just showing you what they're doing. Uh, obviously, if you can't use ByteDance products in your area, i.e. America, pretty soon, then uh, this is just for your information. However, what it does is it takes an image, you add an audio track, and then it then reanimates the image to that audio track. So uh, this is going to be absolute chaos if it's available just in TikTok, because obviously fake videos are going to be literally everywhere. However, uh, let's just uh, look at the facts. So uh, that's what you do. You take an image, you put uh, an audio, and it then creates uh, a video. Um, and then what it'll also do is they've been concentrating on hands. However, they're also really open to say, look, also, we haven't quite got hands right. There's a good, if you go to the website, there's a good experiment um, where somebody's got a wine glass and it just looks like it's really clumpy. If you look at the cabbage guy, if you look at his hands really carefully, they turn into like fists and then all of a sudden they've got fingers. So it's not perfect, um, but there you go. But all of these were images until they were. So I think that's quite interesting. Uh, also going to be pretty scary if we get access to that. Uh, this is Firefox, and I want to call it Firefox, but it's actually called Fifox, which I just think sounds hilarious. And it's Physical Phone Experiments. If you find the letters in there, you'll get Fifox. So this has been around for a while. I've only just discovered it, and it's awesome. So it is available for Android and iPhone, and you just download it. It's free. You can donate to it, please, and, and give them a, a, some coffee money. Um, but it has a lot of experiments you can do using the sensors in your phone. It can do everything from uh, you know just looking at basics like audio spectrums, but also magnetism. It's really interesting to see what electromagnetic radiation is around you right now. And as you walk, walk through your house or your business, you will see massive spikes, which is really interesting. This Sonar locator is really interesting. Your speaker starts making little clicky noises. And as you look around, this is me looking around my desk, for instance, and finding pens, and a, you'll see a mug start to a, appear in the, in the sort of center there. Really interesting. And also, if you're in things like a lift or an elevator, you can actually look at the gravity and the de acceleration or deceleration. Uh, if you attach it to a pendulum, it will tell you what the frequency is. And it's all that sort of stuff. It's really interesting. So, um, very interesting. So download that if you're in any way curious about the world around you. Uh, and also if you're a bit of a nerd like me, that's fascinating. And finally, well done to Stefan Kirschnik, who has got this great... Uh, so if you don't know, you can go to um, uh, HeyGen and create an interactive avatar. It will cost you, I think, $69 a month to get the level where you can do this. But still, it's probably kind of worth it at this point just to do an experiment. However, what Stefan did is he created his um, interactive avatar. You can then get a, a way of uh, inviting your avatar to a conference call. So if you don't want to turn up to a call, invite your avatar. That was the that was the promise. So what he's done here is he invited three of himself and just see what happens if he just has a call with them. And they just obviously start wanging on about Eurovision and they don't really know when to start and stop talking and interject and chaos ensues essentially. So I'll just, I'll just be quiet and you can have a listen. So this is fascinating. So obviously you train it, uh, it knows a little bit about you and it will try and represent you. But um, the point here is it's just way off being actually practical right now. So if you see one of these things turn up, it's just for a bit of a giggle, but that is available to you for $69 over at HeyGen if you want to go and do that. Hopefully that's useful. Uh, hopefully all of that was useful. If it was interesting, great. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. It always helps. Uh, if you know somebody who hasn't subscribed, even if they don't watch it, please get their finger and stick it on the button and make them do that. It always helps. So uh, I'll see you next week.